Now, sweeping powers to arrest people for wearing face masks have come into force in Hong Kong, but not before protesters took to the streets, all in an act of defiance. Now, the mask ban invoked at midnight by Carrie Lam's government drew an unsuccessful court challenge to have it delayed and generated demonstrations in almost every district throughout Hong Kong. The scale of the unrest was so large, the city's entire rail transport system was shut down to contain it. Greg Jennett monitored the protests in the countdown to midnight. That mask ban was going to be the subject of a legal challenge, but here tonight, outside government headquarters, it's the subject of a civil disobedience campaign. We're talking about thousands of people, almost every one of them wearing a face mask. Quickly they mobilised and were off. A tide swept down the road, picking up supplies for roadblocks and barricades along the way. They'd found a new destination and kept police guessing as they went. Well, this emergency ordinance that Carrie Lam and the Hong Kong government have invoked could have gone one of two ways. Either it's met with compliance or with disobedience. And you'd have to say, looking at the vast numbers of people making their way down this road from government headquarters to Causeway Bay, it's gone only one way, and that is utter defiance. If their faces didn't tell the story, their voices did when asked. Will you obey the law? I won't, I won't. If I want to, I, I will come here. I will, I, I will stand up to, for my freedom. That could put you in jail for one year. I know, that's, that's why I'm standing here now. It's very stupid to have this law right now. And of course, we have to protect ourselves. And that is why we're still wearing our mask, because like we don't care. It's not the fault of the mask. It's the fault of the government. Because the government, we need to go up to the streets and fight against it. Their fight took a fiery form. First on an MTR subway station, a lamppost, and then an attack on a symbol of Chinese wealth and power. We didn't have to wait until midnight to draw a police response. A burning bank was enough to entice them finally to come in. This isn't now about arresting people in face masks. This is a basic law and order issue well ahead of that midnight deadline. In a new era using laws untouched for 50 years, it was the traditional use of force that brought this and other standoffs across the city towards a predictable end. Well, Hong Kong has tipped over into a new legal regime with these special emergency powers, and yet this night looks remarkably similar to every other Friday night of the last 18 weeks. There's tear gas, there are mobs of police starting to clear Hennessy Road. And as they did, the tally began of yet more damage and destruction to be cleared in time for the next round when the mask ban will most definitely be in place. And staying in Hong Kong and a warning a gra of graphic vision. Now, social media footage has been released showing an incident involving a plain closed police officer. Authorities say the officer is seen in a white t-shirt fired his pistol while being attacked by protesters. A 14-year-old boy was shot in the thigh during the incident. The officer then drops the weapon after being set alight by a petrol bomb and struggles with protesters attempting to take away the firearm.